Okay, so welcome to the second part of, of today's Oasis Lunchtime Talks. In fact, we're calling this not Oasis Lunchtime Talk anymore. This is Oasis Bonus Talk, because I don't think anybody's having lunch uh, at this time anymore. Uh, but to give uh, us uh, the, the second talk of today, uh, we have Camille Laurelli from uh, Educational Center at National Library of Estonia. Uh, Camille is an artist uh, and also a guest lecturer in uh, Art Academy of Estonia. And, and, and sort of continuing in the theme of game preservation, uh, he's here to talk about uh, Level Up Museum, which is an initiative to, to reconstruct the history of gaming in Estonia. Mm -hmm. Through through consoles, games, archival materials, and personal narratives, mm -hmm. and um, this is uh, we, we will we will see about the length of the talk uh, as we were discussing before the talk. Uh, it, it might run over one hour, but at the same time, uh, Camille is more more than welcome. Uh, he he wants wants you to ask uh, questions uh, in the middle of the talk so this this talk can be more sort of uh discussive in nature so i i encourage all, all of you to 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 ask questions if you if if any arise during the talk uh we will just need to remember to use the microphone but without further delay uh take it away Come thank on. you sorry for the delay uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation uh, Thank you, Niklas. Uh, thank you to Mert as well that uh, uh, that uh, um, uh, that uh, that decided as well to come with me uh, for this uh, for this trip. And um, and uh, so uh, uh, I, I was thinking a lot about uh, how to uh, start this uh, uh, this uh, this talk. Uh, as the, the adventure of this museum uh, came from so many, uh, so many sources, so many things that so, and uh, and I I think I will start from there. So I'm French. Uh, I'm born. I'm 40, 41. Uh, so I'm born in the early 80s uh, in France, but originally like I. I would, I I passed a big part of my childhood in uh, in Corsica. Uh, so uh, I don't know how far this is uh, relevant, but it's for me. I like it as I live in Estonia now, and I like to consider Estonia as uh, uh, almost as an island. Um, uh, but uh, so I grew up uh, more from uh, if. Uh, if we consider video game history, I have more like a Western Europe uh, experience with video games. So I grew up with, my first console was a Game Boy, but I had Mega Drive. Uh, I've been, uh, uh, I lived the golden age of the console, like the fight between Sega and Nintendo. Uh, I got the 32X system for Mega Drive. Uh, I remember when I got it, like was just like a blast. Uh, until I plug it on my Mega Drive, and uh, I had the feeling that has been I have been um, I don't know like robbed by Sega, and uh, I was so peaceful. I sold every all my Sega collection uh, to buy a Super Nintendo. Like uh, take that Sega. Now I'm playing Nintendo. I bought Super Nintendo. I had Metroid, Street Fighter Two, very few games, and Bomberman. And um, got PlayStation, uh, played a lot of PlayStation uh, until I became a student and I uh, played a lot Final Fantasy VII, uh, VIII and IX. When I was a student, I, there was four CDs. I remember the time on the memory card, like I spent like, uh, I was in, I think in first, first year in art school. And I saw that I won. I, was, I even didn't finish the first CD. I was already recording like uh, 25 hours of 
playing. And I, I thought that, okay, I have to make a break. And uh, I didn't play it anymore, uh, I mean, consoles for a while. Unfortunately, I discovered the Flash games uh, on PC, on, uh, thanks to internet, and I played a lot of Flash games. I didn't plan to talk about that as well, but um, so just saying that uh, my background is absolutely not from video games in terms of uh, studies. I made my studies in, uh, in art school and uh, later on I uh, started. So I, I run uh, an art center after my studies uh, for, uh, for seven years, contemporary art center. And uh, uh, in parallel, I was doing my PhD uh, in art school in Annecy and uh, uh, about so my research was more about um, uh, artist uh, uh, art practices in general, and I focus. Uh, I made like a big part of my uh, uh, my research was about uh, Russian activism uh, during the nineties. So again, like totally not <laughs> directly connected to video games, but always been like always like in my work I was using references to video games, uh, uh, but more as a kind of reference to pop culture, but not as a, not as something uh, uh, that would determine, would be something uh, that could drive me for a video game museum. And uh, we moved to, uh, we moved to Estonia with my uh, wife and my son, he was a year and a half, but uh, my son got a cataract. Uh, so uh, it's very problematic because like usually it's a disease for kids, but when uh, uh, it's a disease for old people, like uh, elder people. So uh, uh, it's just genetic situation. And uh, so he'd been operated and he had like uh, lens prosthesis um, and he had to wear a patch uh, for uh, six hours, uh, six hours a day, uh, as long as the brain uh, could uh, uh, work uh, like trained uh, to not forget the damaged eye. So the when you ask a kid to wear a patch on the eye, a kid has two hands, so he was constantly trying to remove the patch. Uh, it's funny because it doesn't look like I will talk about the video game museum. And uh, and uh, and so, but I had to find a way. We had to find a way to uh, to help him to uh, keep the patch. So. We were just putting him in front of video games, uh, not video games, what I'm, uh, cartoons, sorry, uh, cartoons, but uh, so very young. So we didn't enjoy the idea to put a, key, a very young kid in front of screens, uh, but uh, that was the only technique we found to uh, ask a kid uh, wearing a patch for six hours a day. Uh, but no, he was not watching cartoons for six hours a day, uh, but like was like to help. and. Um, but it was passive, so uh, I wanted to, uh, I wanted him to find a way that he could be more active. So then I started, I didn't want him to play on the mobile phone. So I started to search what kind of, uh, of course I'm, I wanted him to play Game Boy, uh, but the screens were very bad. So I started to look around like what kind of uh, device would be interesting to play. And I found out that uh, the most interesting one that would be, uh, Game Boy Advance, and uh, uh, but not uh, any kind of one. As you have two kind of models, you have the Advance uh, AJS001, but you had like the masterpiece of the uh, Game Boy Advance, the AJS101, that has a better screen. Of course, you can customize the machines to put like more advanced screens nowadays. But like uh, so, I found that machine. And I took a Zelda game as, as uh, uh, there was like a, they reedited the, the version of uh, Link to the Past for Game Boy Advance. So I found this machine and uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, Zelda uh, Link to the Past. It was very interesting actually uh, in a way that uh, you don't have to know what you have to do, but it's interesting that you can give uh, the notion of the space uh, like you go to the left, it goes to the left, up, right, down, and it gives as well the abstraction of the space to a kid. So it was very interesting, uh, like my, my kids started to be very interested uh, nowadays with maps. 
uh, uh, be, be, thanks to that, uh, thanks to that, and he knows English as well. But uh, uh, while I was doing this uh, this research, actually, I was making some uh, uh, going in some uh, secondhand shops, and so uh, I found some machines. It's not very practical because I don't see the icons of the pictures I uh, prepared. Ah, yes, I see. Sorry. And I've seen some stuff like this that was in, uh, maybe not that one. Well, maybe it will work. Ah, no, maybe I will take from views from the museum directly. Um, nanana, level up, uh, Alter, Batman, Topology. No. Ah. Maybe that one. Ah, yes. Then because electronic ah, again. You extra icons. Yes. Okay. Some stuff like this. So this is a view from uh, the museum. But I will I will go to the museum uh, soon. But so such kind of machine. So when I when I saw that, so we are in 2016. 17 and I, I saw such machine and of course I knew what was a Famicom uh, at that time like uh, but of course my first reflex was uh, like uh, what is this uh, what is this crap uh, and uh, some Chinese stuff but uh, I took a picture of it and I was showing uh, it to some friends and say oh I didn't knew there was I found this I've seen this machine it's funny and most of the people in Estonia that I was uh, showing this uh, this, uh, this, not this picture, but picture of these uh, second-hand machines. I found, uh, uh, like they were, oh, that's the machine I used to play when I was a kid. I said, you had a Famicom? No, 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 this one, the Dandy. Uh, Dandy, okay, so it looks like then I understood that this machine was kind of popular system that was uh, available, but no idea what was Dandy, no idea what was uh, Junior. Did, did you heard here like uh, about Dandy? Like what is, no, never, okay, good. Very good for me. Um, then, uh, during my uh, my adventure of searching for uh, video games in Estonia, then I found something uh, something interesting like this. Yes, that's the. So that's the one. And then I found this thing. So, of course, I found this thing. I got one, just by curiosity, I was showing to, showing it to friends and say, oh, no Pagadi. Oh, that was my, that was my favorite uh, game when I was a kid. So for me, it was just a Chinese copy or, uh, no, but like here I could say a Soviet copy of already existing game. When I was, probably you, you, if you know a bit about the game and watch from Nintendo, uh, there is one, uh, one, one, uh, one device, uh, one game that was called Egg. Uh, it was like, so for me it was just a bootleg of Egg. So it was exactly the same game. You have a wolf trying to steal eggs uh, from uh, the corners and you have to uh, make a, try a high, uh, high score. So you have game A for easy, game B for uh, hard game, and you have like just timer. So uh, Nupogodi uh, was actually, a, is, or mostly was, because I think it still exists, but it was like a very famous uh, Soviet cartoon uh, about like a wolf and a rabbit. It was like a, a blast everywhere in, uh, in USSR. And, uh, but <laughs> the wolf was drinking and smoking, it was kind of, Tom and Jerry style, but with a wolf that was drunk um, and, uh, and smoking wolf. Uh, and as well, I remember egg, but I remember this thing as well. So uh, Mikey Mouse was one of the first uh, Game & Watch that was made by, uh, by Nintendo. So it was the first cooperation between Nintendo and Disney. Uh, so it was exactly the same, uh, so, uh, same, uh, same, same uh, so it was produced before Egg. Uh, so I didn't, I forgot to take, to take with me picture of Egg, but maybe you have it in mind, I don't know. 
so uh, as far as I know, uh, just like for some IP reason, uh, Nintendo and uh, Disney just uh, shut down their cooperation. And so Nintendo was a bit embarrassed because they had all the uh, all the 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 the, the, um, uh, the, the spare parts uh, for the for the game, but they couldn't uh, uh, produce it anymore. Uh, so they had the idea to replace it with a wolf, uh, and it became egg. Uh, it was not sold in Japan. That was only for uh, uh, only for European market uh, and. Uh, maybe American market as well, and uh, uh, but that's funny because ah I have it I have egg sorry uh, can I open it why it doesn't open why okay I will just share the screen. Can I? Yes. Uh huh. Maybe I can zoom the screen. No, no. Like that. That's maximum, maximum. Okay. Why it doesn't show that? Ah. It's a link. It's a Niper link. It's not. Uh... Okay, let's try. Oh! Now it's there. Okay. Mix me there. So that's the egg version. And that's what is interesting is that when you look at the Nupog Nupogodi one, which is just behind. Take. Yes. Uh, okay, the wolf. Okay. Okay, well, maybe. So this one is interesting because we see the, the box. I will not talk much about electronica as well, but. Okay. Why I can't them have both next to each other? Okay. Okay. So here it's funny because uh, I thought that it was just a bootleg. Uh, the Soviet version, a bootleg of the of the egg game, but it's funny to see that actually the wolf is really different. So they redesigned as well, like the wolf. It's not just an exact copy. They try to uh, so, but basically it's exactly the same design, same template, same gameplay. Uh, they just uh, shift uh, the character, but uh, I have a, there. I have. I don't think egg was known, so it's definitely. Uh, a copy of Mikey Mouse. I can't believe that uh, the the egg was so poorly produced that uh, they, they 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 made a copy of the of uh, this. Oh, okay, the P two. Uh, what is our tab is here? So, uh, um, but the so it's a bootleg of the Mikey Mouse basically. So, but what it's funny, uh, it's like. Uh, so same design, but uh, actually they shift the character from the mouse to the wolf. But of course, uh, in the Mikey version, Mikey is saving the eggs, but the wolf, of course, is stealing the eggs. So I don't know if it's an allegory of something, but that was, um, I will come to the story. Uh, that, that was the kind of some elements that, uh, so it was interesting because I, I couldn't find any real, any information online about that. Uh, that situation. Of course, there was some materials about uh, uh, Nupogadi, about uh, this game that mostly was, uh, I would say, uh, Russian literature, uh, uh, some blogs, but basically I couldn't find anything. I, I will come to, okay, that's the logo is interesting as well, so that probably we will see several times in the pictures that I will show. It's the logo of Electronica. So Electronica during Soviet Union is not a company, it's more like an organism related to Ministry of Technology. So Electronica was in charge uh, during uh, Soviet Union to build everything that had any kind of electronics. Uh, calculators, cash machine, TV, radio, wherever there was electronics, it was Electronica. So as well, they were producing this uh, electronic game. I would like to keep going with this electronic game because I have a few, uh, few interesting uh, stuff, but uh, maybe 
I, maybe I will keep going a bit with, I, I will go back to the electronic game uh, a bit later, maybe in a few minutes, but I would like to keep going with the dandy a bit. Uh, so when uh, Soviet Union collapsed, Ah, there is pictures I didn't took with me. Actually, it's interesting that so one of the most uh, 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 the, the 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 machine that was the the most cloned systems at that time was uh, the ZX Spectrum. Uh, ZX Spectrum was extremely popular, uh, probably because it was easy to find the uh, components uh, to uh, to build it. Most of the uh, ZX Spectrum was a homemade system, so you had to find uh, the component by yourself. Uh, and uh, uh, to build it back. So we have few uh, few copies of it. I did, uh, I, about Electronica, Electronica started as, after that, to produce Pong systems. So uh, only five Pong systems uh, was uh, was released. Uh, it was interesting that actually you, could, you couldn't buy it easily. Like you had to uh, hide a position uh, in Soviet regime to expect a paper authorizing, authorizing you to buy it in specific shop. So, uh, but it was exactly the same thing. So for the uh, uh, for the, the 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 spectrum system was somehow uh, was different because you could build it by your, by yourself. Not so easy to get the components, but uh, um, but so uh, why I'm telling that it's that you have one machine uh, called Alf. Uh, here I would like to find uh, a picture of it. I didn't plan uh, to talk to show uh, half system. Is there internet? Yes, there is internet. Half spectrum. Uh -huh. ZX spectrum clone. Image. Oh, very good. Can I get this picture? Ah, yes. So here, oh, you can find online some. So the ALF. So ALF is interesting because it was somehow like a kind of a clone, I would say, of a, a kind of NES design, more close to an NES than a Famicom. Uh, it's funny that I see here that it's funny that the cross is on the uh, is on the right side. It should be, no, normally, yes, yes. Uh, the, so they inverted the, the cross and the, the buttons are not at, at the same position. It's, uh, I just noticed it now. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, but uh, it's, uh, it's a clone of ZX Spectrum, but it was so, so it was a Spectrum, ZX Spectrum uh, with, uh, with no keyboards, but with a cartridge uh, game. Uh, so a cartridge system that you put. So that was produced uh, not in, a not in 21, uh, it was in uh, late, uh, very uh, late, uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, only few models uh, remained uh, officially, uh, but really like, like, like two or three. Uh, um, uh, then Soviet Union collapsed. Soviet Union collapsed and then there is a company called Stepler in Russia. Uh, so here I need to go back to my files that I have, don't have anymore. Okay. Uh, okay. New Okay. Here, tech. Then these. So Stepler is a. Okay. Ah, yes, it's inverted. Okay. Take. Take. So it's mostly like a distributor of, uh, of computers, but then they develop a branch uh, for, uh, for computers and they started to develop this, uh, uh, this console that I show you before. So without, without any agreement from Nintendo, but they, so that was the first, very first model that was produced. This is nice because as well, you can see like Stepler logo on it. So that was a Famiclone. But uh, when, the, uh, when the clone started, when, when on the market, uh, so we are in 92, uh, 
uh, when Nintendo found that out, it was too late. Like Stepper already sold millions of them. Uh, but the clone was pretty decent in a way that if you take whatever Japanese cartridge, you play it in a, on a clone system uh, from Stepler, uh, it will work. You take whatever yellow cartridges that was like the usual, uh, uh, the usual, yes, this kind of cartridge. Everything is inverted. Like, like that was the kind of cartridge you could find. Super game, 316 one. So that was very classic uh, cartridge you could find. Uh, you had usually uh, compilations of uh, hundreds of games, but usually you only had five or six, and it was just declination of the same game. So if you had the Mario, you had Mario 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 11. But usually it was just some advanced version when Mario can run backward or uh, uh, can fly or like just some code modification. So it was tricky. Uh, so it was like usually pirated uh, cartridges. There was in Estonia, you didn't had and in the nineties, no official market uh, for such things. Everything you could find them in uh, uh, flea markets. Um, you can find them uh, uh, like in like in in some uh, obscure shops, uh, like it was sold like in regular in the regular shops, but like it was not officially uh, authorized. Um, so so when Nintendo found that, so they they asked so as the compatibility between both machines were pretty uh, okay, Nintendo s asked Stepler like. Um, if you stop, stop to sell your pirate games uh, and you only sell uh, Nintendo brands, we don't put you to the court. So they agreed, but of course they didn't care. And for a decade, they keep sold pirate Nintendo, pirate Sega, pirate Atari. So the irony of the story uh, is that, of course, uh, Famicom uh, is not produced anymore. Um, uh, uh, Stepler doesn't exist anymore, but uh, dandies are nowadays. Uh, 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 massively manufactured uh, by some obscure uh, factories. So the legacy of that are probably you've seen, sometimes you have some advertising on Facebook, like uh, a machine with uh, like played, like looks like PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, with uh, all your retro favorite games. So basically it's just like kind of uh, eight bit uh, games that are uh, implemented into the, uh, into the, uh, the system. You have now flash disk that you plug behind your TV with wireless uh, controllers, usually are very bad quality uh, things. Uh, so, so it's interesting how uh, it survived and keep uh, mutating. And actually, it's thank so it's not to say, uh, look how Russia or Soviet Union wasn't clear with the patent and the copyrights, but it's interesting that actually it's thanks to all these pirate games and system, if you have a collective memory about video games in world Europe, uh, if you have a, now a, like an international market, if you can sell, uh, companies can sell Xbox, can sell uh, PlayStation, uh, it's uh, as well because of uh, these uh, pirate, uh, pirated games. Um, So that was fact. Uh, and for me, it was very hard to find actually information about that. So I get in touch. Uh, I was searching online about people interested about preservation that would give me like more information about that. And my, uh, the, 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 uh, the thing is that like no one could uh, give me any information of that. So I went in touch with an organization called mo5.com, uh, uh, which is the oldest organization in France that are working for preservation of uh, electronic heritage. Uh, they were curious about what I was uh, talking about. Uh, of course, in Estonia, like these things, like I met some people who know about video games, they heard like all what I say, it's not something that myself I discovered. Like it's things that, uh, that uh, something that I called myself uh, <laughs> uh, contemporary folklore. Uh, so it's a kind of folklore that everybody like knows about, uh, but uh, uh, no one's uh, that there is no trace of it, uh, or like uh, something we can call as well chanson de geste, uh, which is uh, how it's defined, like a gesture song, uh, like a, uh, Don Quixote, uh, like which is a story that is uh, told. Uh, uh, 
from generation to generation and, uh, and at some point someone is putting it on, uh, on the paper. Uh, but, um, so I, 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 uh, but I was very interested about that and uh, I will pass some details, but I decided to So this is anecdotic, but I'm an artist. I have a studio in, uh, in a place called Ars. Let me show you the place. I have picture. Oh, no, here I am on the internet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I want to go here. Oh, OK. Sorry, I will, I will uh, just develop something, so, some other anecdote. I have a feeling I have to talk about it right now. Otherwise, I will. Uh... So about this uh, contemporary folklore, the... you didn't have SCART on the TVs. Like most of the people, the early 90s, most of the people was equipped with uh, Soviet TVs. And they had like pretty powerful, uh, pretty powerful uh, antenna uh, receptor. And uh, or maybe was not so well equipped, equipped uh, with a RF uh, receptor. So uh, you could put, install behind your dandy uh, antenna system. So this one is pretty advanced one. I think this one was especially like, yes. So it was, so usually you don't have uh, these black things here, like just like antenna system that you plug behind your uh, dandy. So no wires uh, request. You just search the channel uh, on the on the TV. So to show you how this is uh, somehow working is that take, I lost the, I lost the, like here, no, no. Uh, okay, I lost it. Then these, I found a picture where we see to show you as it was. Yes, so this one is a kind. It's a. Uh, it was popular as well. Like that was a super dandy, uh, but uh, so here it was called UFO. Was very popular as well. But it, it's a dandy. Uh, as you can see, the the antenna is sold uh, in the in the box. So it was very interesting. So I got uh, stories from visitors at the museum that used, used to tell me that uh, you have some specific time to play. Uh, when you were living in a building uh, in this uh, like uh, functionalist uh, architecture, like very, uh, ver very uh, uh, like kind of sky skyscraper, uh, like uh, if you were playing your dandy, if your, uh, if your uh, neighbor uh, was watching the TV, and accidentally was on a similar signal uh, from uh, the one of your uh, console, like he could start it to uh, see your game. Uh, so it was disturbing the neighbors. So playing dandy was could you had to play on certain times to be sure that to not disturb like some specific program that everybody uh, loved to uh, to look at. Um, so that's funny thing that I think that I never heard before, uh, never heard uh, anywhere else. Uh, yes. But what, what, what if uh, if there were a lot of people doing like playing dandy at the same time with with the antennas and uh, where uh, they're uh, mixing uh, up with each other? I think it's a good uh, 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 development for an experimentation. <laughs> that I have no idea, but okay. I really would like to see what's happening. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know. But I would say that it, when I saying it, like for me, it looks like uh, I say it like as it was something very common. But I have no idea. Was it something in general everywhere? Uh, is everyone was playing with the antenna system, uh, or was it just with the wire? And if it was with the antenna, like. The, did it affect like only one person, or uh, was it like interfer inter inter interferences if you were playing a game and your friend another one, and they had like like I, I don't know like because could depend probably the model of the TV. Uh, I, I I cannot say uh, exactly as I have no trust and uh, testimonies unfortunately. Uh, 
Ah, but I can say something that when we started uh, the museum, like uh, we have, we found uh, huge Soviet TVs that was really like extremely heavy TVs, and we plugged different TVs, uh, we put different TVs next to each other, and we managed to get the signal on the three TVs from one dandy. <laughs> Uh, so basically, yes, I saw it. I, I saw it working, at least. Um, so uh, then, uh, so as so us, us, us. Uh, yes, wanted to show us. Um, uh, Skyn. I didn't talk yes about Mega Drive, but uh, collection photo. Level up space. View. Ah. So that's the factory where uh, we started. So as I, um, uh, when I arrived in Estonia, I, uh, I, we, with my wife, we got a studio uh, in this factory. So ours is an old uh, Soviet factory that was very, uh, uh, very popular during Soviet Union as they were like building like they, they were very famous for uh, ceramics, for jewelry, for as well uh, decorations and uh, uh, clothes uh, for uh, the Bolshoi. And uh, so it was like very important uh, uh, technical and cultural uh, um, structure. And but uh, from a decade now, they started to develop a politic. They wanted to refresh a bit the, uh, the, the, the picture of it. And uh, so they started to establish uh, artist uh, studios. So you can now find a, a designer, uh, 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 musicians, uh, fine arts uh, artists uh, from different fields. And you still have like uh, classical factories for uh, 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 ceramic and uh, you have a huge ceramic center there and uh, so I had my studio there and as a, uh, every year there is open studio and there was a um, there was a, so I didn't uh, I was all these things that I described to you like was already in my uh, uh, was it's, it was <laughs> occupying me a lot and uh, as a funny regards to, to that instead of showing my artworks I opened my studio and I installed the console that I kept from my childhood uh, that I installed I was working in ECA I used uh, uh, in the art academy and I, I bring uh, uh, a screens from the new media department, uh, CRT screens that I installed in my studio and I plugged all my, all my console. So there was like a Super Nintendo and uh, some other uh, device, an Atari and uh, some, uh, yes, uh, uh, Mega Drive, uh, N64, like kind of, like this kind of classic system. And, uh, and I removed my name and I wrote Video Game Museum. And, uh, and it was a huge success. Like uh, people, like normally it was supposed to end up around uh, 11 or 10, but like the, we had people until three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. And uh, Tallinn is a village, it's, it's a small city, so information are running fast. And next few day, few, few next day, a few next day was discussed already, like to organize an exhibition at the National Archives uh, of Estonia about uh, uh, video games in the context of uh, Estonia that I actually, I, couldn't really uh, do like I didn't had like the the the, the uh, like the, the the tools like theoretical tools with me to uh, launch such kind of uh, such kind of things. But uh, I understood there was a confusion uh, that uh, because most of the machines that I bring and I plugged uh, for many people like uh, uh, that are not uh, as the, the the background of video games are very different. But most of the machine I had for Estonia it was very exotic because it was not sold. It was not sold during Soviet Union. And when Soviet Union collapsed, most, most of this machine was even not on the market because like it was too much expensive, not accessible. And through people start, I think started that the games that was screened was my, because it was artist, uh, open studio. Uh, so people, start, people thought that the games that was on the screen was the game that I developed myself. So there was a kind of confusion uh, that 
produce uh, interesting uh, situation. Then the graphic design department ask, of uh, Estonia asked me if I could give a course about video games to their first student. I, I said yes, because for me it was an escape door, interesting escape door, because I asked the student from graphic design department to help me to build the exhibition at the National Archive. So it was very good, uh, very good. Uh, so the, 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 at the end, the exhibition was a huge, uh, big success. And I met uh, Andreis Rusinovskis, uh, the co-founder of the Video Game Museum. So I met him by accident uh, during this exhibition. And we were discussing about like uh, why such events should be uh, temporary. Why not to find a place where we could have like a permanent place where we could play video game? Why not to have a museum? what do you have? So we had the PlayStation, we had nothing. Like we had the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, I had these few machines that I was describing and uh, let's find a, let's find a space. So we run, uh, run around, run, uh, run a bit around and uh, I talked with the Artist Union of Estonia, I told them, we, we discussed that we have some idea for a video game museum and of course they heard about this exhibition at the National Archive, so they say yes, of course. So uh, uh, maybe here I should move the, no, no, I will do it like that. Okay, so they show us, so here was already cleaned. They show us an old metal factory. So that was, how was the space that they show us? Like this. So here we, we cleaned already. So it was pretty big, like, like we started from like, I think the space was about 200 square meters, something like this. And uh, so we we're thinking like, but how to use that uh, such uh, space? So basically, uh, like we say, okay, we just uh, plug a machine. Uh, we try to find uh, all the technicals uh, from the same period of the, when the machine was created. We try to find the same furnitures uh, from the same period of, so basically recreating uh, dioramas uh, from furnitures that anyway, no one's wanted to care. Like most of that such kind of furnitures was possible to find on the Facebook market uh, for free. And uh, very quickly we had, uh, we managed to uh, produce a uh, like kind of uh, interior. So then, so that was not at the beginning, but it gave an idea of how the space started to look like. Because somehow like we, I think it was somehow like good con coincidence because in a way, like when you, I understood that what is important, like when you, the, 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 the nostalgia that you have about a video game, it's not like the nostalgia of a game itself that you play, but it's the context where you were playing it. No one's play exactly the ga a game in the same condition. I was playing the games uh, when at my childhood, when I was in Corsica, I had to go to my grandmother the weekend to play video games. And then I was uh, going, uh, I, when I didn't have the Game Boy, but first was my friend got it, so I had to go to his place to play the Game Boy. Some people had to play uh, video games because the cousin had one at home for holidays, or some just had one and just playing in the sofa, but some was playing in the kitchen. Or, so it's just that, and this is bringing a lot of memory. So I started as well to understood. We, we saw that from the people as well coming to the museum. They were like commenting mostly the things that he was bringing, we were bringing that had no, totally nothing to deal with the video game itself. Um, and um, uh, that, uh, that, yeah, so there was a kind of enthusiasm that uh, was, uh, was built around the video game. So it almost, I would almost say that video game became an excuse to produce a scenography uh, that couldn't be possible without uh, video games. Um, so here, look, I'm start, I don't know if I have to describe, but of course th there was many anachronism uh, in the way how we, we made it. But I will try something that I never made before. Uh, so we had 
Tartu University, uh, before we closed, so unfortunately the museum as, uh, as it exists uh, like that, uh, like doesn't exist anymore. We closed uh, after a uh, COVID period to find another place. We opened in another place uh, in the suburbs of Tallinn uh, before to end up at the National Library. Um, but um, uh, Tartu University came to us because they wanted to develop a program, uh, educational program uh, online. But I need internet. So it's customized a bit by them, but you will have a bigger idea of. Oh, I need internet here. A browser, okay. And now I copy paste. No. Let's see. Ah, no. Uh, here. Control C, Alt, uh -huh. Control V, Tac, Enter. No. Okay, let's try again. Develop tour, yes. Control C, Control V, yes, Enter. What's the enter button? It looks like pause. Is it that? No. I can. Oh, moment, moment. I made a mistake. Did I copy? I made the wrong. Did I copy your? Is it yours? It's yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah. I made. I. So, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Make it here. So sorry, it should be a bit long. G point cloud. Okay, point cloud point UT. Point UT. Slash. Uh -huh. Without model. PHP. Looks like it must be here. Tech. Tech. Point PHP. PHP. Okay. Surprise. Okay, that's working. So, uh, yes, educational program. I said this already. Uh, let's begin. Uh -huh. Begin with the adventure. Okay. 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 Touch. So this is. Um, so they came. Uh, so it's uh, thanks to um, uh, ta uh, Tanel. Uh, who uh, and his uh, colleagues that made a uh, uh, 3D, uh, like a VR uh, 360 vision. So it's nice because uh, it give it will give a better idea. So the characters were not from us; it's from uh, from the. So there is some absurdity with the games that we will see. Like there is currently here was normally the place for the Xbox One. There, there was no uh, Earthstone. Uh, on uh, Xbox, but it will give an idea at least about uh, about the space. So it was divided by uh, by year. So the arcades are interesting as well because there was only two person in wall in the Estonia in the nineties that was producing all the arcades for the territory. 
And uh, so we tried with the help of one of them to, fi to find them uh, because most of them were abandoned or like bought by collectors from abroad and all just, uh, yes, just in trash. Uh, here we had the PS2, uh, we have a stand. So we had the support as well uh, from uh, second-hand shops, electronics, uh, second-hand shops. So here was installed the Wii U. So we had like as well stairs here where we installed a, a temporary a temporary exhibition uh, uh, gallery. Here we had uh, Saturn was installed. We have a PS2 uh, with uh, uh, DG Hero that was uh, playable. So in the shelves, so here was, the, so people had the map, I had a picture of the map, uh, uh, maybe it could be better. So we have like some uh, uh, over um, elements like, consoles that was uh, in the in the shelves sorry oh, yes so, so all the all the consoles are playable yes everything was playable and and i was just wondering like for example with the with the kind of the perhaps a bit lower quality pirate consoles uh are they, do they kind of they kind of withstand a lot of playing or like, like there is no worry about anything breaking up. Uh, if, yes, if... Uh, especially with dandies, the controllers, uh, they were only probably, I think there is no more uh, dandy controllers working nowadays. Okay. So all the controllers were, we have few still working. Um, and it's uh, as well like it's problem. I, it's it's funny that the twelve pin uh, controllers they are still some of them some of them still working. Uh, strangely, they are more strong than the nine pins ones. Mm. And uh, and but it's still massively produced. You can find easily uh, nine pins uh, controller, so uh, it's playable. So here we have like so the Terminator is uh, was like very popular uh, dandy. Uh, this is just like more contemporary one uh, looks like a Famicom model uh, last generation of Famicom uh, and uh, but yes but then for the other machine uh, Super Nintendo Mega Drive and so on uh, we, ne we we very rarely have a problem and if we have we can it's fixable uh, so here was the dandy uh, the dandy uh, area uh, here I don't know, so it changed, so we had like just few controllers, I don't know, ah yes, I know why, it's because it was at the period we already, we already removed uh, some machines uh, because we were, we were on the way to move. Uh, we had like one, actually I don't start from the beginning of the room, but that's because of the problem. So here we have, oh, uh, this is interesting. So uh, this is Mega Drive pirated, uh, pirated game. So I will, I will just go uh, for a few minutes uh, about Mega Drive. It's interesting. So here I can as well, like I will not develop so much, but on Dandy you had like one of the most popular uh, game was, uh, uh, was uh, So Marie. Uh, so it was uh, like a fusion with a, uh, uh, <coughs> Sonic and Mario. Uh, uh, so you play Mario, but uh, in uh, uh, in 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 uh, maybe I have yes. So you can see like, uh, but in you play Mario in uh, Sonic. Uh, uh, what's the first uh, level uh, in Sonic? Uh, Green. Green Hill. Green Hill. Uh, so as there was because uh, that's something that we could compare with uh, Brazil. Like in Brazil, you had like a, you have a company called Tectoy that developed for many uh, for many years. Uh, uh, we keep going Sega productions, uh, even late later after the pro official Sega uh, pro uh, of Master System or Mega Drive was uh, terminated. Uh, and Tectoy uh, used uh, actually games uh, for uh, like the change pictograms or like uh, characters uh, in original games and they put like their more popular local uh, characters. So, um, but this was produced in Taiwan, uh, Somari, but was extremely popular uh, for in, on uh, Russian markets. And uh, yes, so uh and many people that couldn't play mega drive or didn't knew about sonic they know somari 
uh, interesting. So uh, yes, I'm, I was talking about uh, Tectoy because they produced uh, a Street Fighter 2 for uh, for Master System. So uh, they just like uh, cloned the, the ROM uh, and they produced for Dendy, uh, you could find a Street Fighter 2 uh, for, uh, for like as a fam fa Famicom uh, version. Uh, you had even like different names, Master Fighter 2, uh, Street Fighter 2 Pro, uh, so you had a lot of uh, declinations of the, of the same game. So that's all the games that, like, this is games that we have at, uh, at, at the museum. But about uh, Level Up Scan, I made a pre-selection of them. Uh, Batman. Oh, sorry. Just before me, I have to show you that. Uh, Alter is a... I hope... Will, oh, it's opening here. So it was a very classic. There was a very classic, um, uh, very classic electronic game uh, by Electronica. So I couldn't find better, uh, better visual. So it was a, like uh, here you had like a monkey uh, trying to stop uh, football uh, with like you had like mouse and a duck. So you had version with four mouse and you have a version with a mouse and a duck. And uh, they are throwing uh, a ball, and the monkey has to stop it. But what is very interesting is that this one was equipped uh, by. Uh, so that was the, the the code name of it. It's really like DBJB06I or L. And it was actually like a uh, like a, a detector uh, for. Uh, uh, radiation detector. So just in case you are uh, in, a, if there is a like nuclear explosion and you are in a bunker, uh, to not get uh, uh, to not get uh, bored, you have a small electronic game with you. So that was very 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 special. So it works. This one works with. So as you can see uh, here, we see four batteries, but looks like needs five. Dosimeter, yes, yes. So I don't know if there is a Game & Watch collectors, but uh, like if they want like a masterpiece, that's the one to keep. <laughs> Monkey Keeper, maybe a better picture. Ah, yes, I have a better picture of Monkey Picker. Monkey. So that, because it was produced uh, reg as, a regular, uh, as a regular game. Yes. So here you don't have, so uh, we have a version at the museum, but we have four Mikeys. I don't know why, but I have no idea why there is a, d a small duck. Maybe probably they wanted a Donald, Donald duck, but like whatever, a duck. Uh, yes, and this monkey trying to stop the balls. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so Mega Drive. Sorry, uh, Mega Drive is very, <laughs> it's very, it's very nice. Can uh, maybe I put it here and the pirate cover again? Okay, so maybe I could take them all. And if I do open, open. Tell me you do. Oh yes, 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 yes. So Mega Drive was, uh, I think, for Estonia and Ru or Russia, was like having Neo Geo. Uh, you had like uh, a lot of pirated one, but it's weird because I found pirated systems. Uh, but like when you open it, uh, you can find a Sega, uh, like a Sega logo on the piece that are used. So I think there was like a side market that was a half uh, agreed, not official, but somehow they agreed that they used uh, some of the materials to build it, as, as uh, we have at museum, like a Soviet master system. So Sega sold master system during Soviet Union. So it was basically, it was sold in the official uh, box of the master system, but there was some uh, difference, like you don't have the light when the machine is, uh, uh, when the machine is on, uh, and you don't have the um, Sega card reader because Sega produced like as PC Engine uh, flat, uh, flat, uh, flat cards uh, with a game on it. Very few, but they produced like something like 10, I think. 
but this disappeared on the Master System 1. And it was sold with a Russian manual, like a manual written in Russian. Uh, and uh, so, so there was a market for Sega anyway. So if this is our Fernie, for uh, this one, our Fernie, because like uh, Assassin's Creed, of course, never been produced on Mega Drive. Uh, we here we have Alien Three written in Russian. So the particularity of this game is that it's fully translated uh, in Russian uh, when you play it. And it's funny because they don't care so much that they put Predator instead of Alien. Uh, this one is Super Mario, so that's the original Super Mario 8-bit system for uh, Nintendo, but they put it uh, for Mega Drive, and, uh, but as you can see, it was produced a bit later, but like there was a market for that, like it was uh, produced, it's, it, you see, it's new, it's written. Uh, and, uh, and it was with the, the game that is called Tank, uh, usually in, uh, in Russia, but it's Battle City originally. Uh, uh, and it's funny, uh, and it's funny because Assassin's Creed uh, is not Assassin's Creed on the cartridge. It's the 8-bit version of uh, Dragon's Lair. Uh, uh, we can see uh, on the back, we see a dandy that was very popular as well. So it was another model of dandy. It was called Subor. It was the black one. So yes, uh, just for information. So yes, you see it's written in Russian on the back. So here we see like that screenshot from uh, Dragon's Lair. Uh, I think it's a 16-bit version. I see it from the graphics. Uh, well, Squirrel King, uh, it's just, uh, um, uh, how was it called? Uh, Chippendales. Chippendales, thank you. Yes, yes. Squirrel King. So, <laughs> <laughs> very much this one. Uh, it's a problem. It's a very good. Uh, it's a very good scan. Like it's not a problem of the uh, quality of the picture. So uh, maybe you know, you know maybe uh, if you know about like how at the beginning of uh, video game magazines when you had to uh, like the first uh, the first experience you had with a game uh, in the uh, late eighties uh, during nineties was like buying magazines. So you had the first preview of a game from the visual, but at that time there was not, uh, uh, you could just not download a, a, a digital file, but you had to find a way to take in picture the screen. Uh, that usually was a CRT screen, so very hard to take in picture. So you had like a very a crazy a way of like, you needed a very, uh, very, like a kind of specific uh, lens that like, like that could correct the, uh, deformation from the from the from the screen, so it was very hard. But here they didn't care at all. They was just taking picture of the screen, and they just put it. Uh, so that's why we see that it's a very bad. Uh, and they just take for the yes for the design of the of the of the box. So yes. So that was the kind of compilations five hundred did one for uh, for Mega Drive, Dynamic Duck. So it was funny because most of the, they all have a code as well, like a reference code. Power of codes with this. Tangle book. It's interesting how they don't care about the design of the, the fonts and the Ghostbusters. Here we have Centurion. It's interesting because like to make believe that it's a totally uh, uh, like new land to discover, they just put uh, upside down the, the map, uh, like, like they reverse the mirror, the mirror effect on the world map. Sorry, is, is there like, like uh, is there uh, any any sort of in interviews or like any connection to the people who were making these like 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 just to like it <laughs> with some of these examples it's it is is kind of makes you makes you think that they were probably having a lot of fun creating this maybe yeah. like i hope they had as much fun as i have to look at them uh, but be, I mean, it would be super interesting to, yes. to yes, see. Exactly. Hear, hear yes, exactly. Yes, yes. We, tr I tr we tried to find uh, as well with uh, my, uh, it's not colleague, but he's a friend, uh, he's teaching at the 
uh, Tallinn uh, University is in charge of the Game Studies program, and we are uh, uh, actually uh, a big, huge part of it uh, come, is coming from uh, Andrei Rusinovsky, uh, the co-founder of the museum that he got from uh, um, uh, someone who used to have a shop. So when you had the games, when you were you wanted to sell Mega Drive games. Uh, because that's funny, because many of the dandy games didn't have boxes. So the first uh, ones that was sold by Stepler, they had like just a carton box with a transparent plastic. So the stickers on the on the cartridge uh, was like the the first uh, like had the role of uh, of of, uh, of the first visual of the main visual of the of the design. And um, but for Mega Drive, as they, they had like these uh, plastic boxes, so it was like low quality uh, plastic boxes. So they, they, they received, they had to find by themselves the empty boxes and they were receiving from Russia or from other uh, from other uh, place. They were receiving these um, scanned uh, covers uh, to place in the plastic box. So they, was re they were receiving the games. Uh, the covers and the box separately, and then they had to put them together to then to put them in the shop for sale. So interesting process. So it's funny because this is Jurassic Park two, but if you if you look behind, if I can go behind, yes, it's exactly the same. Uh, the the oh, maybe with the arrow, yes. So you see the back pictures uh, here. Like if you move to the. Second one, they are exactly the same. Only these two ones changed, but they are exactly the same game inside. Starring Poltergeist, Barbie Vacation Adventure. It's like Alice, uh, not Barbie on the picture. And I think that ah yes, and the characters here is like Sand uh, Cinderella, I think. Yes, but that's the uh, last one I had for the Mega Drive. Okay, I remember that I moved uh, to Mega Drive, but I moved to Mega Drive, but I was on the, ah, yes, I was on the, yes, I was on the tour of the level up. Uh -huh. Tech, tech. So yes, because there was these things here. Okay. Uh, so here we had, so here there was like a company uh, specialized in uh, um, interactive uh, scenography for museums that they made the donations of this uh, box, uh, tactile screens, but we plugged on it uh, some, like here it was Mega Drive. Uh, here we had like, uh, here was a PS4. Uh, we had like some PC with some retro games like Diablo uh, and such, such other games like this. Here we had like, uh, we don't know why there is Doom because uh, they put Doom, but uh, here was uh, Xbox uh, with a Kinect. So it was possible to play uh, interactive games uh, from the, with, uh, from movement. Can I go, is it interactive that I can click or wherever I want? Oh yes, super. So uh, here usually was the entrance was from, from there. So here was like, like 70s, early 80s room. So we had like uh, on behind this character, there was like ZX Spectrum 2. Uh, here was playing uh, original Famicom. Uh, Pong, uh, Pong was playing, but not on this TV. I don't know why it was there. Pong was, we had like an Atari there. Uh, we had different uh, Pong systems as well was in exhibited, so we had a few captions as well. Uh, here we had the NES. Uh, ah, here it was the Pong. I don't know, they put uh, Space Invaders, but it was <laughs> it was a Pong playing there. Uh, so here we had the NES playing. Here was playing, uh, uh, it was Cassette Vision. It was a very weird machine that was only sold in Japan and France. Uh, it was a kind of clone of Master System, uh, very bad machine. They only produced 10 games and they wanted to do, like, yes, to beat uh, Nintendo, but they didn't manage. Uh, here was a Master System. Here we had a, a Commodore 64, so <laughs> they pr 
<laughs> they put uh, uh, they put uh, they put I see like uh, Resident Evil, <laughs> but it was a, it was a Commodore 64 and some retro PC, uh, some old PC that was usually playing a Space Road, uh, as it was the first video game developed in Estonia. Um, probably you ever heard about this game, Space Road, where kind of. Uh, um, dead and die and retry game where a spaceship and you have to reach the end of uh, uh, end of the track and it was like more and more complicated uh, well uh, like very very good game uh, in the early 90s that's the only game in Estonia that was published uh, with a box actually most of the games nowadays are developed uh, or online here we had like uh, Apple II the Vectrex was playable uh, as well uh, and uh, we had one arcade that was working with a Neo Geo uh, MVS uh, system. And we had the kitchen that was used uh, for the, um, uh, for uh, like business, like team building parties. And uh, we had like, uh, we had like a table football. There was like here possibility to listen vinyls uh, and tapes. Uh, in kitchen so here we we had like a rock band so that was extremely popular rock band uh, I've become like fan of the guitars from rock band as well we have like so this is a, we have partnership with Sony Estonia so they help us they help us a lot like they provide us a lot of like uh, press kit and uh, demonstration stands uh, we had a small arcade room as well so we had some uh, support from uh, arcade legends in france and they they managed to bring us uh, to estonia thanks to wine company estonian wine company that they had some space in the track they put arcade and they bring them uh, to tallinn so thanks to that we had uh, the house of Dead 2 <laughs> with a street fighter like this is absolutely it was not that uh, here was uh, Virtua Tennis. Uh, here, at least, like that's the real crazy taxi. Uh, we have Mortal Kombat. So we have collectors that made deposit of few arcades as well, uh, like uh, Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, like uh, here was uh, um, Virtua Fighter 3. Uh, I don't know. There is Space War, but uh, currently that's uh, Super Striker, uh, Striker Soccer. Uh, da, 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 da. It's not easy to move. So yes, but basically that was, and here we have like one, uh, one over arcade. So I didn't make the wall tour. Maybe if I can uh, go to the map, I will go there. Oh yes. So here we had like, so it was more like the nineties. Uh, area so there was like a Sega Mega Drive, uh, PC Engine, uh, Super Nintendo, N64, and so all the games were playable. So when you wanted to play, for example, like Mega Drive game or Super Nintendo game, so you just open the door, you took the game, and you place it on the machine. I don't know. They put Final Fantasy uh, VI, but oh yes, yes, compatible. Uh, and yeah, so here it was the Mega Drive. Uh, there was like a Xbox and PlayStation that was like uh, here and there. Ah, and the, here was the here behind this uh, woman here. So it was portable uh, systems. Uh, and uh, yes. So, but we had to close that place. So we moved to. I will not. Uh, show uh, the wall thing, of course. Uh, if I can go back to the size, ah, okay. Um, then this level up space, Digra. Uh, uh -huh. So maybe here it give I don't know if it give a better picture, but that was again like so. That was how it looks like the museum on a regular photography in 
uh, in hours. So we had as well like a stand here. Um, and so then we moved to Mustame. So here is the, how was the museum until last year, or year and a half. So we managed to, so it was interesting because the museum, how it was built uh, in us was very empirical as we were finding the furnitures uh, as we had uh, consoles because like, but yes, there's something I didn't said, but we had a lot of donations as well. So uh, we were like expanding the, um, uh, the, the rooms in the museum. Uh, to what machines we got. For example, we, like, we didn't ever plan to use uh, microcomputers. So uh, I had to go back into basic language to understand how to run it. And then with the help of some uh, friends, uh, like to develop like a small uh, booklet, leaflet that people could uh, use uh, uh, to launch the machine or the games that they want. Uh, for example, for the tape player it was very problematic because the tape player or ZX Spectrums were, was uh, broken pretty fast. So uh, as the ZX Spectrum 2 Plus had, uh, we found a way uh, to make uh, input, audio inputs, and we downloaded the audio files of the games or the program on a tablet that we plugged on the ZX Spectrum. So basically the people could just uh, open the tablet and choose the game they want to play. Uh, they launch uh, the loader, the reader, and uh, the game was loading directly from the tablet. Uh, so it was very, very practical and it saved a lot of uh, tapes. Um, so, yes, yeah, so when we moved, we managed to move mo most of the um, uh, furnitures and, uh, and arcades. So we managed to rebuild the museum in uh, like, uh, because uh, when we left, uh, us, the museum was 350 square meters uh, museum and uh, we had 150 when we moved to Mustame and, uh, and in parallel it was interesting because we already started to work with the National Library uh, about the same exhibition uh, in the same, I mean, in the same context uh, uh, and uh, like a scenography about video games and uh, uh, and the discussion become more and more serious about like moving to the National Library. And uh, but what was interesting that now we are uh, now working on problematics of uh, preservation problematics, uh, which we couldn't work as uh, independent uh, structure uh, before. Uh, I have a small view uh, here I have another small view so that was uh, at uh, Mustame one over view and okay and yes here so here is the that now the space that uh, we are working and uh, in 2026 so we couldn't move the whole collection at currently at National Library so we just made a focus on few games and few machines. Uh, we developed some as well uh, educational uh, program for the for the schools that we couldn't develop easily uh, when uh, we were uh, independent. And uh, well, we are still independent, but like now we have to cooperate with the um, functionment of the library. And uh, yes, so now we are thinking about elements about like. Uh, uh, legal deposit and uh, things like that. Um, uh, yes, I was pretty long, maybe. Uh, you can, but I think I will stop from now. Uh, okay. Do you have any questions? Thank you so much, Camille. Uh, it was a very sort of a co comprehensive uh, deep dive into the to the sort of origins of the of the museum and and also I, all, all the contents uh, contents and, and and the histories of, of different different consoles and games and 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 what a what an awesome awesome uh, web page is the, the the interactive one like really kind of gives you an idea of of, of that space mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, 
we do, do we have immediately questions from the audience? Uh, I know it takes a takes a takes some time uh, to kind of come up with questions. Uh, I was like just like just one of the many things you were mentioning the the pirated games, and I think uh, just like a like an anecdote uh, about about the kind of the the later life of these uh, these pirated games because there there are now some some you know small publishers who are publishing you know let's say uh, SNES, uh, Super NES games Super Nintendo games and and the kind of publishers who are kind of like looking all over the world for for these small obscure titles maybe titles that were like almost published years ago but just like in the final final moments were cancelled. But some of the titles, they these like one particular uh, publisher I'm thinking, uh, uh, I think is called Pico Interactive, mm -hmm. and, and 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 I believe like some like one of these titles is like like when you had these pirate pirated versions of like existing games, but they they were so well made and sort of so perhaps altered from the from the original game that they kind of like are now seen as their own games like they, they like like okay okay this is this is already different enough to be its own game e even when it's like a version of final fight mm, or something mm, mm. and they you know these publishers are now sort of like uh like saying like well we can we can publish that game now and then it's it's perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. So I find that very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't a question, <laughs> but yeah. So, but yeah, there was many there was many homebrew games that was developed as well during that period. Exactly. Uh, using the name of a different uh, like official. Uh, yeah. Like like I know on Mega Drive you can find uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. But it's like it will it's a homebrew game that uh, has been developed uh, and. Yes. Um, I was wondering, like, how recent are some of those, like, eight or sixteen-bit, like, pirate games? Because uh, one of the five hundred games in one yes, collection yes. had, like, games from all the way from the eighties up to, like, it said that it had, like, Street Fighter Five, yes. which is what up uh, ten years old. Up approximately mm -hmm. and then you had your uh like assassin's creed series and that's so all those still kind of made and sold actually in in estonia or yes. eastern europe yes 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 it's uh you can still find them there is like small production of these things uh, in some like obscure asian factories <laughs> you can find them i think on aliexpress alibaba or like this kind of uh, wish or I don't know, like it's it's still possible. I would like just to uh, make a small focus uh, on this one, Mega Kid. Uh, this one is actually a model that I don't know because the model that I know uh, actually have uh, controllers and uh, controllers and buttons A and B. Uh, couldn't find it uh, online. Uh, but you had like different as well. You had one machine that was called Victor. Uh, that was a that was a clone, dandy clone, mm. and when you bought it, there was uh, inside uh, there was a, uh, there was a, a cartridge. Yes, that's the cartridge you can see here. Ah, yes, here. So that's the Victor. Ah no, it's this one is dandy's, but the design was so it was sold really like as a kind of microcomputer. So the, the dandy is built in, in the keyboard. Uh, you had a mouse, uh, you had controllers. Uh, all of them that I know had controllers that look like PlayStation 1. So this was produced uh, at the late 90s. Probably some of the models, uh, similar models, was produced at the early uh, 2000. But you had inside like this cartridge, this kind of cartridge. So it was fully compatible with any dandy cartridges. 
but uh, but this this uh, ones that was sold with that it was sold as an educational uh, computer and you had like a, a clone of a Windows inside so you had like a, a, a Word uh, program uh, Word 1.0 uh, uh, you had like that was sold that was called on the cartridge a Super Word uh, <laughs> then you had Excel uh, 1.0 uh, it was exact, but it's a perfect clone. Well, I mean, perfect clone, but exact clone uh, yeah. of the original uh, Word uh, program. Uh, Excel is usually called super excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, and inside you have like paint program, you had like, uh, uh, like the usual games that you find in, uh, on Windows, like uh, Minesweeper, uh, with probably a, different, a bit different design. Uh, you're lucky because, like, I, at the beginning, I planned to bring with me all these machines to show in live, and uh, but like, I think that uh, that would probably took uh, ages. It was better that I came with visuals. So, but the um, uh, yes, the mouse was working, uh, and uh, yes, what I said was that for me was very impressive. It's that you could find these keyboards with the 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 the, the D pad on the keyboard. And the button A and B. So basically, you could, when you were playing, you had to bring the keyboard as the controller. Mm. So, yes, but uh, of course, in terms of ergonomy, I think it's totally very stupid. <laughs> but uh, never seen that before. Uh, and uh, but of course, you had the 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 nine. Usually, it was a nine pin, uh, usual nine pin uh, uh, cables to to plug controllers. Uh, yes, uh, but that's very anecdotic. Uh, any other questions? Well, yeah, it's kind of a curiosity, actually. So you say that they keep uh, manufacturing these consoles. Yes. No, but... these consoles, no. Uh, no, but okay. uh, Dandy's, yes, uh, definitely. Actually, I say Dandy, but the Dandy doesn't exist anymore. I'm sorry for that. It's just that. Uh, the term Dendy doesn't exist now. You have a, actually uh, there is an interesting uh, website, uh, but uh, I'm, I will not search for it because I'm scared to lose time. Uh, but uh, you, you, it's possible to find online some. Uh, if you search for, you write Dendy as a keyword, uh, you can find like uh, or Famiclones, just Famiclones uh, archives, Famiclones archives. You will see that the clones that existing are just like like mass. It's massive. So I said Dandy because um, Dandies were so popular that it's even replaced the term uh, video games uh, in uh, in Russian language. So even the electronic games that I shown you, like the um, uh, the Nupagadi, uh, it was like when you play, when you want to go with your friend to play some Nupagadi, it was like let's play some Dandy. So it become like even like a general term, but nowadays the term dandy is not used. Like sometimes to play on the nostalgia, you will have like some side company that will produce the, like a, a Famiclone that looks like maybe a PlayStation, and you will be written in the middle dandy, uh, just because it will help to sell it for the people who had nostalgia of that uh, of that time. But uh, yeah, but my my question was kind of I'm not sure if I would call it technical, but for instance, uh, to use original pieces that nowadays would be, I think it would be even more expensive than producing it with new materials. And no. also, uh, what about the connections? Do they use HDMI no, cables? Very, or... I mean, like, just imagine for the keyboard that, of course, uh, if the piece are not uh, working, it's because the cable, uh, small cable is broken, probably. You have to resolder, to solder, to solder it. But... Uh, uh, usually, it's very basic. Uh, uh, it's it's fixable. Just l the 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 big problem are usually the plastics. They are breakable easily. Um, uh, uh, no, but uh, most of that machines was usually easier to find from Russia, and I didn't expect that. There was few shops that we managed to get things in in Estonia. I wouldn't expect that because of the war, uh, we couldn't uh, get uh, access anymore to many of uh, these uh, artifacts. 
from the night from the 90s and uh, and so it will become even more and more and more complicated to find uh, and uh, the, this uh, these systems and games okay Th thanks for the interesting talk uh, as Heike said it it touched on on quite a lot of things uh, one of the issues I'm, I'm quite interested in is that you as a curator seem to be sort of maybe pushing the boundaries a little bit about what game exhibitions are and, and you showed some pictures yesterday about ah, yes. the new 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 yeah. game controller well, thi thing you you made okay. so, so maybe can you because yeah. it, it, it seems to be like you're not an institution maybe you're not a collector in the in the sort of traditional sense uh -huh. sort of what, what what is you sort of bring an artistic vision to game exhibitions so could you talk about that yes i can um So since I since I work with the museum, we have been and uh, we had, we started to be in touch with video game studios, uh, local video game studios. Uh, we had uh, big support from few of them. Uh, some were collectors as well, so they helped the museum. Uh, my colleague Andres now is more in, less involved as uh, he, thanks to the museum, now is in charge of uh, educational program uh, with a video game uh, studio. Um, so, and uh, so he's in charge of Game Dev Estonia, which is an organism that uh, is working for uh, the communication of the whole video game studios in Estonia. Uh, so let's say that I keep uh, working on the pre uh, preservation part, and Andre is more uh, on the video game like field in general, and. Um, and uh, and I often uh, had this situation because I have an artistic background. I have art background. I'm I still present myself as artist, and uh, because it's the case, like I keep doing exhibitions, and I always I grew up with uh, Fluxus uh, and uh, like artist uh, conceptual artist uh, uh, like Fishley and Vice or. Uh, artists like like uh, John Armleder or like that really really I appreciate uh, and I, I always like when I for me when I started the museum and I had all these TVs everywhere like for me it's uh, it's the first thing I have in mind it's it's the work of Nanjun Peik and uh, I don't see uh, a CRT farm or I see uh, for me I I'm I have a feeling that I'm playing in the same playground than this uh, this artist of course, in the museum, that's not the kind of talks that we are providing to the audience. Most of them don't care. Like, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and I like as well, I'm interested to the performing art. And I enjoy the idea of, hey, let's play the museum keeper. I want to play the museum keeper. Uh, I, I, like when we started to think about how to present the, the, the games, like as I didn't had like the background, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know all technically how Kojima worked uh, on the first uh, Game Gear. I knew that they had, like when Zelda was produced, that they had like technical Super Mario or whatever games that had this uh, uh, technical limitation, space limitation. They had to be creative to uh, pass over the limits and make believe that uh, what is inside the cartridge is bigger than you can you can you can imagine. So probably there is. Uh, in terms of creativity, something that we could compare with. But basically, me, technically, I had no idea about what it was. So I needed to, uh, I needed to uh, work maybe on something that I understood that probably, I understood that there was a part of video games that was not explored, maybe more today, of course, but the, the, like how to look at video games uh, from uh, anthropology or sociological uh, perspective, uh, how video games, uh, 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 how this uh, yes how we could play with the like with recreating these uh, dioramas um, like if we manage to recontextualize the, um, the, 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 the the period of the game from the furnitures uh, or from the metal oh there was another thing that was very exciting was like of course when so when Soviet Union collapsed like you had all the cuts from Western Europe that been in in, in contact with the uh, legacy from Soviet Union so you could have like a uh, like a, a, a Soviet Lenin lamp uh, on a, 
on the furniture and next uh, you had like a, a poster of Michael Jackson and then uh, you had a collection of discs uh, from, uh, I don't know, Prokofiev and, uh, and then uh, next to it uh, you had a collection of uh, Terminator VHS and so there was, and when you looked at the pictures uh, from, uh, because then I, I, of course I was interested so I searched, I was searching for books of uh, interior design from uh, 80s and, uh, and 90s to try to see like uh, how, so for me it was as well very interesting because I didn't grow up during Soviet Union so it was for me very interesting. Well, of course, Andres was there, so he was uh, he could uh, calibrate the thing, the things sometimes. And uh, and uh, but it was very interesting that to uh, in terms of composition uh, to uh, to to try to rebuild these uh, uh, these interiors and uh, and uh, of uh, like recreate a nostalgia that myself I didn't uh, live. So it was uh, like yes, the experience was totally different from how. Uh, I, I, what I was proposing and how the people was uh, reacting. So for me, I was really like composing. I was, for me, the museum is uh, still nowadays, uh, even as we are working with library, I always have the perspective of, uh, of an artist uh, working for a, a video game museum. And, um, but at the moment I have the feeling that it's working that way. And, uh, and uh, yes, so of course, Probably I'm thinking differently, like when in terms of scenography, probably I, always, I, I don't have the same, even I don't have a museology uh, uh, background. Or, uh, and as I said, like as I, for me, it's obvious as well to work on the scenography as I, I used to work. I was a technician, uh, ex exhibition technician for many years. Uh, I used to run an art center for seven years. I'm running a small exhibition space uh, nowadays as well, like in France, like I'm doing exhibition in small uh, uh, boxes in the street. Um, so like the idea of anyway, thinking the exhibition always been there uh, and still there. So that's why I like to play. And I, I, I like to use, as I said, video games as an excuse to propose, uh, to propose um, uh, uh, an experience uh, with video games. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Heike had to leave, so I'm kind of taking over the position of a moderator here. So I think we still have time for a question if somebody has one. If not, we will thank Camille again with, with an applause.